It was a film by Alfred Hitchcock called Saboteur, and I played the role of Fry, who was the saboteur. The ending took place on the Statue of Liberty, and uh, as the villain, I am being chased down to the end of Manhattan Island, which in those days was called the Battery. I think now they have another name. They were building up the area. Someone was just telling me about it the other day. John Hendricks, the mu jazz musician, he lives down there now. It's all built up. But in those days, it was just a little ticket office to take a boat to go over to the Statue of Liberty. And the character's being chased down there. And I won't go through all the details of that, but he goes into the statue, and he's being chased, and he goes up to the top, where he has a scene with Priscilla Lane, and then he sees that the the police in the FBI they want him. They want him to they want to capture him alive because he's a Nazi spy. And they want to get information out of him. He sees them coming in from the crown of the statue. He sees them coming in at, as the boat came in. So in the course of events. He gets out onto the torch, which had a railing around it. And Bob Cummings, who played the good guy, comes out looking for him, and there we are on this sort of balcony, actually. It isn't really, but it has a railing, and it goes around the torch. And Bob makes a gesture at me with his gun, and it frightens me, and I go backwards over the railing, ready to fall, and do fall. And this was a stunt performed by Davy Sharp, who was the great stuntman of his time. At one time, the stuntman had an award like an Oscar on Emmy. It was called the Davy Sharp. They discontinued it because stunts are very complicated now in the sense that many people are involved in them. But anyway, he did this fall, and he went free fall through the air and caught right between the thumb and forefinger, which uh, was done without any net protection, anything. And the hand and the torch and the hand and the, were built to scale exactly as the Statue of Liberty. So he went that height, caught in there, then they cut to the close-ups with me. And uh, now it's a scene where Bob Cumming comes along the finger and grabs my sleeve to hold me from falling. And then the scene develops, and Hitchcock keeps cutting between the shoulder seams and our scene and you see the seams beginning to go. And finally, they do, and I slip through and fall, and Bob Cummings is left with nothing but a sleeve and fell down. And that was the scene, with a great scream I fell, I might add, a great scream. Uh, when, ben Hecht, when Hitchcock ran this picture for Ben Hecht, and Ben Hecht saw the scene, when the lights came on the projection room, he said he should have had a better tailor. But it was very effective, so much so that to this day, it plays every day at the Universal Tour here in Los Angeles and at their tour in Orlando, Florida, where I was photographed just a couple of years ago, about this rather elderly gentleman, myself, talking about that young fellow up there. And that's what they run down there every single day. And they give the tourists the opportunity to sit in a chair and pretend they've done the fall. It was more complicated than that. You see, the days before gr graphics, before uh, all the computers and all the remarkable things they do with film now. You had to stay closer to the real thing. That is to say, the cameraman who did this, named John Fulton, was known as the best trick cameraman in Hollywood. That meant that they would do these things, these trick shots, and this shot was 
there was a, a pole and a kind of saddle, black cloth, because they were going to mat the shot in. And I sat on the saddle, and on cue, uh, I would do four, just lean back and do balletic motions. But the camera was on a platform that was suspended from the grid with a hole in it, shooting down. And on cue, it went up to the ceiling as I did these things. And then we, we did it at different speeds. And finally, they, I don't know what speed they finally printed. And then you got the shot. Now, an interesting thing about this, by the way, is that it's a memorable shot uh, because Hitchcock, and that was the whole point, knew that this shot, story-wise, it's a lesson for the story makers, had to be done from close up without a cut. Now, how do you do a guy falling over the Statue of Liberty from a close up to the base without a cut? And that's what he worked out, what I just described to you.